So uh, I, I I think uh, you got a brief about uh, idea about you know I uh, we are uh, IP cricket. So basically it's you know all you need to do is put a headset and you know you you'll have an electronic bat. So you can start playing cricket as if you are in a you know world class stadiums like you know Wakande or something like that. So you can start playing the game. So it it gives you an, a very immersive experience you know as if you are in a ground and you know with the crowd cheering you. So uh, that's a brief about IP cricket. So. Uh, you know, you can experience the game. Uh, we have an arcade here in uh, Bechboli as well, uh, in Indra Nagar. So you can uh, do visit. Uh, you know, the virtual reality uh, experience can't be explained. It only has to be experienced. So uh, it's in Indra Nagar. Uh, uh, Bata showroom. Are you aware of the Bata showroom? Okay. So uh, yeah. So I can uh, share you the details uh, after this session. So, uh, you know, uh, we have multiple uh, engagement features, you know, like a multiplayer game, like uh, where in which, you know, uh, you, you, your family and your friends sitting across the globe can also, you know, uh, join and play together. And also you have the tournaments, you know, uh, like a knockout tournament where in which, you know, you play, uh, progress and, you know, somebody will be the winner. And you also have a companion app because, you know, it's an arcade model. We want to extend our, uh, you know, engagement beyond uh, arcade. So we have a mobile app which has a, you know, session based multiplayer games, uh, where in which, you know, you can play uh, your games and also, you know, during by playing the games, you get, you know, rewards. Those rewards will enhance your uh, playing capability at the VR arcade. And we also have, you know, you will be building some virtual uh, assets, be it in terms of, you know, your field set or be it in terms of your uh, bowlers capability and all this stuff. So uh, these are some of the features uh, that we have as part of the IP cricket. So. I, uh, as I said earlier, you know, these are the challenges, not just for uh, IB cricket, but for any startup, you know, that come to us. One is smaller teams. You know, you can't expect a, you know, a startup starting with like, you know, 50 or 100 or so, right? Generally, you know, the start, any startup starts with like few couple of members. So they have uh, a lot of startups start with small and they want to focus on the core of the product. Not they want to don't, they don't want to touch each and every aspect of uh, uh, you know, they start up, be it in terms of the accounting part or, you know, be it in terms of, if you take the case of technology, they don't want to, uh, you know, do the heavy lifting of uh, ensuring that, you know, their uh, application scales. Okay. So they want to fo uh, focus more on the creating an experience that will entice their customers. And, uh, you know, they want to experience, uh, provide a uh, consistent and reliable experience to their customers iterate as fast as the market demands because you know they are yet to figure out their market product market fit so they want to keep on releasing uh, features on a day to day basis multiple times a day okay so for that iteration to ha happen and also make want to make their services lightning fast and at the same time they want to optimize their cost so with lot of challenges they have yet they have to be successful in terms of you know uh, finding their product market fit and you know they have to scale so today I'm going to uh, touch upon like three use cases. Uh, there are many, but I want to just in, uh, keeping in view of the time. I'll touch upon three use cases how uh, IB Cricket has leveraged uh, AWS game technology. So use case one, uh, it's game lift. How many of you have uh, deployed any game server on AWS? Any multiplayer? Okay. So uh, how many of you know PUBG? Everyone, everyone knows PUBG, right? So, uh, like, uh, if you take the case of PUBG, uh, you, you are, you know, sh uh, sh uh, you know, you aim the shot at somebody and, you know, uh, uh, you already shot him. But the point is, uh, what if uh, the guy has already moved on from that place, uh, like, a half a second before or even a 200 millisecond before? What do you think? I mean, you, from your perspective, you feel that, you know, I aimed properly and I killed him. But uh, the truth is that, you know, he already moved like uh, 50, 100 milliseconds back. Is it acceptable? Every game player wants, you know, the experience to be uh, fast, fun and fair. 
that's what any gamer uh, plans to do right so it comes with a lot of challenges though the game appears to be you know uh, simple but uh, if you take the case of technical challenges they are tremendous so uh, you know uh, one the point i'm trying to arrive at is you know taking the part of uh, latency when you are taking talking about multi uh, multiplayer games session based games latency plays a crucial role so uh, in terms of uh, aws game lib uh, it provides a, you know the global median latency is 41 milliseconds that's like you know damn 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 uh, fast right So, purely being an AWS partner, I, I, I'll try to back from that uh, angle. Um, so, the first and foremost thing I'll say is that depending upon the application, there are multiple ways that you can use the services, right? If you look from the traditional way, as you said, it's simply an EC2. So, saying, hey, you know, go and launch an EC2 and have your application on the platform. And the next thing, like, you know, Elastic Field Stack, uh, that way you don't want to manage the servers. Beyond that, there are n number of things. So ultimately, it is like, what are the functions that your application is trying to do that determines the what different services that you can utilize in the database and so on and so forth. Um, so here, you can just forget about what is the hardware that you need or you know, what is uh, uh, the supporting aspect or whatnot. And also, what is your core strength, right? Because there are so many supplemental services So for that perspective, you need to figure out, uh, think key what technology we need to use first. But with AWS and for startup, I think failure is the best thing to learn. So uh, I totally agree to what uh, Tushar has said. You know, uh, just to share an experience. So the when I was in my second year of college, uh, right uh, right after you know I learned this programming uh, C C plus plus language. And you know, uh, I started developing a website. And uh, you know, uh, I downloaded. Uh, I believe it's some uh, PHP framework. Uh, so uh, I think it's Magento. I believe uh, you know, uh, I was playing around with it. So uh, e-commerce. So uh, I was going through the entire PHP code, uh, just looking at you know what are the places that I have to change. I mean, which is bullshit. I mean, uh, it's a framework, and you know, you know, it already has a lot of things. Uh, you know, all you need to do is you need to uh, go through their admin panels. You need to make changes, or you know, you can write a plugin. So uh, I, I would say that you know, exposure here is also matters. At the same time, failure. You know, uh, once you fail, you know that you know you need to look for things uh, beyond uh, the traditional way. And uh, you know that's when uh, after that my uh, you know I when I miserably failed in terms of you know looking at it from a totally different lens coming from a uh, you know very basic uh, C C plus plus background. So that's when you know I started uh, looking forward uh, to what are the various things that are happening in the ecosystem. So I started uh, you know uh, I spent like an hour or two uh, on a daily basis just to stay updated because I know that you know in future it is going to save me a lot of time. So, uh, coming to the startups, uh, I would say that, you know, uh, start with, uh, you know, very lean, with whatever you think, you know, it, it need not be that, you know, uh, uh, trying to understand serverless or trying to understand containers or anything. Just start with what you know, be, uh, run it on your laptop, you know, probably showcase it to your friends and, uh, you know, start getting feedback. And the last point, you know, once you identify the product market fit, probably, you know, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, startup events like this happening. You can start attending these things, so you'll gain the uh, knowledge and you'll be able to make better decisions. But I would suggest that you know, in, in the initial days, better focus on instead of uh, focusing whether should I use AWS or Google Cloud or Azure, just focus on your product, build it on your laptop, just start getting feedback, 
you know, uh, later, that's uh, at a later point you can look into these things. Okay, so, just to summarize, right? so if you look at both Naveen and all of them said that, <clears throat> do not plan for intra in the beginning. Now, just start, now, even if you're a CTO or a VP tech, you want to sort of have that engineering moment, right? So, he's right, so if you remember object-oriented programming back in the days we started in college, right? That is exactly what you start for before even thinking serverless or thinking lambda, right? If you know object-oriented programming, if you can divide a problem statement into mutually exclusive objects, and each object, object as in a function or a body, right? Don't say object. Right? So each object having a fixed task and a uh, fixed input and fixed, it does a specific activity, right? That is a great starting point before even thinking about AWS, but what are you use right? So start, I think that is what you meant when you said, do not think AWS first. On paper, draw out your modules first. And most of the developers make mistake there. Right? They do not plan for the modules and they start learning components and they get so lost in the ocean that they never come back and think object-oriented programming. So it is an object-oriented programming concept that is driving the whole cloud-native and serverless infrastructure of the future, right? So you must be, your developer should understand object-oriented programming. Second, both of them said that failures is important. Now, one inherent problem, if you look at it in the future, and I think I remember the question from the panel also, one inherent problem of distributed computing or using, or using multiple components for your application is that each module can fail any time it wants to. Right? So failure is like given. So how A, how do you guys plan about it? Like uh, because I also see that right, my lambda keeps failing for certain requests. Now at a user level, maybe 0.001 percent of a transaction will be failing. But a lambda at an individual component level, that person might be let's say one percent. At a database level, it might be zero percent failure. But a so you have now because you're doing multiple modules, you have different failure rates at different components. So how do you guys handle it or what is your recommendation around this? Or handling failures or accepting failures in a serverless or a cloud native kind of architecture, right? How do you guys plan for it? So, uh, again, uh, I mean, giving the data is what, generally what we do is that any customer, let's say you're coming to data, this is my constant flow mode here. Uh, we are keep watching for such kind of events. So, simplest thing that you can do is the cloud watch event, right? So, the way the cloud watch event happens, anything goes wrong.